All right, we're still with you. The breakfast is still being served here on PLOS TV Africa. At this time, we're looking at what happened on this day in history. Interestingly, we've been giving you uh, hints as to what occurred on this day. Two names are prominent. Uh, former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, and the then NLC president, uh, that's comrade Adams Oshimole. Um, both um, Adams and his crew were threatening strike over fuel price hike. Kerosene, the president then promised that he's going to reduce the price of kerosene as a way to, you know, allay concerns exactly. over the hike. Um, in the price of uh, fuel. That was on this day um, in 2004. Exactly. And, and one of the things that you, you know, might look and well, you might spot out you know, in this story is um, that was the era that Adam Sushumele became Famous. You know, a household name. You know, mm -hmm. that, that was the era. I remember seeing him in the news then because I, was in, um, I grew up in Benin. So a lot of times you see him in the news um, you know, while they're doing their protests, you know, he never had a handkerchief. He always maybe chose to never have one. Um, so he's on, you know, on the streets sweating, you know, with his, what name of those suits? French suits? <laughs> I think they're called French suits. Um, yeah, and, so pr prior to this, actually, he, prior to this, he, the, he and the, the team then uh, threatened to go on another strike because the government... Me, announced that there will be a hike in the price of uh, fuel, that uh, tax rather, in the, in the to fuel. And then they said they were not going to accept it. Even before parliament accepted that that should become law in the budget appropriation bill that was sent to it, the government went ahead and enforced it. So, we, you know, when I, when I was talking about deja vu, we have that scenario today. The other day, um, they also, uh, at that time, um, got a court order to stop the planned strike at the time. So, 2003-2004 versus 2020. <laughs> Just the other day, we had a strike. Industrial court ordered that there must not be any strike. Today, we still have strike, as we on strike. Um, some doctors, they've been on strike on and off. So it seems like the problems that's been plaguing us doesn't nothing seem really, to go. It, really just, it just changes name or changes uh, face. It, it's quite unfortunate. One really. thing that has changed, though, is the price of petrol and kerosene yes. over time. In 2004. We were protesting when it was... <laughs> 49. It was 40, 40, 49 naira in 2004. Yeah, I think it was between um, 40 and 49. And, and then kerosene, I think, it was 48 naira in 2004. Can and you now imagine? Now it has, I don't even, I don't know what the price of kerosene is uh, now because I haven't bought, I've never had to buy it. Yeah, it, it, it's quite, I mean, we were protesting when it was 40 naira. Okay, let's say 50, 60 naira. No. It, makes, it makes me really wonder if we succeeded with any of the protests. Uh, because over time, you know, yes, there were protests. I remember there, there was a time when it was 21 naira a liter. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, we've gotten all the way now to 160, 159, 160. Uh, there are places currently in Abai selling as high as 200 naira a liter uh, because of the f um, uh, fears of uh, petrol scarcity. But have we really succeeded with any of these protests? Has the government really listened to what Nigerians are saying when they say we don't want an increment, we can't afford it, the cost of living is extremely high, inflation is slapping us even in the face? Then, even then, even, even as at 2004, let me quote something that Adam Soshomole said. Um, he, I'm quoting him directly at the time. He said, since when the price was between 30, um, 43 and 45 naira, to a liter of um, a petrol, he said, and I quote, since we cannot bear this hardship indefinitely, we shall resume the general strike and protest within uh, two weeks. That's the NLC president at the time. Hardship for 40 <laughs> naira. Now, just oppose it to 260 naira. Let's not, I mean, you get the picture. The difference is, in 2004, it wasn't my responsibility to face these bills, all right? It was my parents, and I'm sure they did pretty well. But now, it's, yours. it's my responsibility. I have to buy 
um, electricity, you know, for really, really outrageous tariffs. I have to buy petrol at 159 naira a liter. I have to pay my house rent myself. And so it's, it's entirely different. Difference. Now it's my fight. So, yes. Okay. Uh, we'll like, keep fighting. Someday we'll get um, <laughs> um, um, a headsway. And let's Hopefully. talk about the anti Trump protest. Also yes, in this in 2016. day, 2016, yes. um, there was an anti Trump protest. Initially, they estimated that 2,000 people will protest, uh, but no. It turned out to be over 10,000 people uh, protesting for days. This was the third day in a row that the people were protesting um, against uh, the emergence of Trump yes. as and president. If you, if you remember, um, intriguing. Yeah. If you remember, it was uh, with the hashtag not my president. Mm -hmm. um, I remember also go going on because I still worked on radio then. So I remember going on, um, on getting ready to go to work uh, that morning, 4 a.m. I turned on the TV. And I was shocked because that wasn't the result that I expected to see. And so I, you know, eventually got to work that day and, you know, eventually everyone got to accept that Donald Trump had won. The protest started that day, you know, continued for, you know, a couple more days later. Hashtag not my president. A lot of people didn't want, mostly because of his campaign. His campaign seemingly was Rhetoric. filled with a lot of yeah. um, divisive and um, um, narratives, you know, that a lot of people weren't happy with. Yeah, the talk of building a wall, you know, and cutting off Mexico, the, the thoughts of uh, sending um, immigrants back to their countries and some of all those things um, played out. And that's why a lot of people, you know, were with that hashtag. The Russian interference also. Yes, know, that up. was another uh, issue. But I, I was going to quote some of the comments that are still relevant today the fears about racism, uh, the fears about, uh, you know, creating a log between the people and their belief system is still very prominent, even now that um, this election 2020 has come to pass. But one thing that was consistent since 2016 was his tweeting. In response to those uh, protests, let me tell you what Trump did. He sent messages on Twitter. The first one was, just had a very open and successful presidential election. Now, professional protesters incited by the media are protesting very unfair. He did that on a Thursday. And then on this day, on, uh, in 2016, November 12th, he gave out a tweet saying, um, love the fact that small groups of protesters last night have passion for our great country. We will all come together and be proud. At least that part is good for me. Random, question, random question for you. Do you feel the narrative about Donald Trump has been mostly pushed by the media or has he dug the hole that he is in today by himself? If we had a guest, I'll see. Let's ask the guest. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap things up here now. Thank you so much uh, for staying with us uh, for Off the Press. But the conversation is not done yet. We're still going to be looking at other areas of our development. We're talking about money and how important that um, the government have fair policies when it comes to prices of fuel and all of that in today in history. Hello. Um, after Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.